How would you like to make things that nobody else can make? My brain is going crazy with these possibilities. This is the brand new six color PLA mixing 3D printer from Ren Color, and we're gonna go over it all. I'm super excited. Let's go. This is the Ren Color AC10. It is a filament mixing 3D printer. Essentially, there are two spools that hang out on top. They go down and go through two separate extruders. Then those two extruders feed it into a single hot end and out a single nozzle. So inside of that hot end, there's some very specialized hardware that takes the two incoming filament lines, splits those into about seven streams of filament into a mixing pot where it's then extruded out that single nozzle. First, let's get these nerdy specs out of the way so we can hurry up and get to what this machine does, doesn't do, what it's good at, what it's bad at, and who I think this machine is for. And thank you to Rencolor for sending us over this machine to share with you. I don't get any extra additional incentives uh, for sharing this machine with you. Um, they just let me keep the machine, but stick to the end because I'm going to tell you how you can actually get the machine because I'm going to give it away with some extra little bits of goodies. The build volume is 295 by 295 by 360 millimeters. That puts it on the larger size of uh, 3D printers in our industry right now. We would call that a helmet class 3D printer. Those are about 300 millimeters cubed minimum, but 295 is pretty close and I think the the Z makes up for that. The heated build plate gets up to about 100 C, which is interesting because the hot end is limited at 250. So that was an interesting decision that they made to have a heated build plate that goes up so high, but a hot end that doesn't. So we'll talk about that here in just a moment. The build surface is a flexible magnetic sheet with kind of a medium rough texture. Now the hot end again, 250 C, but it comes with a very specialized hot end. It's a proprietary nozzle that's actually a copper nozzle that's for mixing with a, with that 0.4 millimeter nozzle. It's an interesting choice, I think, to go with copper over brass. Copper being uh, quite a bit more thermally conductive, and that could explain why when we're printing, the default profiles are set for 200C. And to be honest with you, I don't print PLAs at 200C. That's too low. I'm printing mine at 210, 215, somewhere minimum. And I think when you get to speedy printers, you're printing them over that. But I was finding that even though it defaulted to 200C, it was printing silk PLAs, regular PLAs and PLA Pros from Polymaker just fine. And that was making me scratch my brain a little bit um, until I went back and I started to do a little bit more research on this hot end that's on the Ren Color and that there's a lot of copper in there. And the way it divides that uh, filament into six or seven strands for each color I went, okay, that's it. So they're, they're able to transfer so much more heat into that filament um, and keep it flowing. And I think that that's kind of a cool thing that they went with uh, copper on that. It's not the fastest printer. It prints at uh, speeds up to 120 millimeters per second. The default profiles, I think, uh, are about 70 millimeters per second. And I found that that's where I was printing at, somewhere between 70 and 90. Um, the more the more I got over 90 into 100 millimeters per second, I kind of started to see some artifacts. However... I had a loose belt uh, on my X carriage, and so I ended up uh, tightening that up, and then I didn't go back and retest printing at higher speeds, but that could have obviously had something to do with it. But anyway, I think that this printer is going to be probably a machine that you're printing in those, those slower traditional speeds of around 70 to 90. The modes are basically six color, blend, gradient, and segmented colors. And those are essentially, think about it like this. This is gradient, and that means that we have 100% on one color here on the bottom, and then it transitions slowly, mixing to the opposite color at 100% on the other side, which is, which is pretty interesting. Then you have a segmented mode where essentially each segment here is being printed in a different color uh, that the printer can do. All of the configuration for this mixing is done inside of the Ren Color Slicer, which is basically kind of a, a reskinned version of Kira. Now, I'm gonna say this right now that I wish the experience in the Ren Color Slicer was a little bit better. Um, I really think that a machine like this, the hardware is fantastic, and I think their technology and their this new mixing hot end is great. But the power really comes from the software and the user experience, and I think right now it's a little bit limited. I would love to see uh, some some really serious development get put into that software to really take advantage of of what a machine like this is really capable of. The machine has dual Z motors. That's just going to keep everything nice and even uh, as the Z's traveling up and down. 
It has a 4.3 inch color touch screen. The user experience on the interface is pretty basic. I think they've done that on purpose. Uh, it does not have a lot of options and configurations inside it. It's it's somewhat limited. It's going to allow you to do exactly what, uh, what this thing does. You can control kind of the mixing and things like that on the fly on the machine um, outside of the slicer. But other than that, it's it's pretty basic. You load filament, you unload filament, um, kind of adjust temperatures, uh, Z offset configuring inside the uh, interface, little basic things like that. But it's just it's a it's a simple interface. It has power loss recovery, and I know this because I had it plugged into the standard UPSs that we use when we're printing and testing machines. And somehow I unplugged the UPS from the wall and forgot about it. And I ran that printer for I don't know a couple of hours on that UPS um, before it just turned off. Incidentally, the power loss recovery works very well. Now, before we get started with my thoughts and my criticisms, I want to share with you that this is a Kickstarter. I've never used Kickstarter before, and I don't have a problem with it, but I think that you should definitely learn about that if you're not sure. Head over to kickstarter.com. You can learn about the risks and rewards for backing a project. This particular Kickstarter project starts out at about $369, I think, for the initial pledge, and it comes with the basic machine, and there, there might be some filament that comes along with it. But like I said, if you are interested, we'll have the links in the description, and uh, but definitely read about Kickstarter so you can just know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Let's go ahead and start with my criticisms. Then we'll go through my positives, that way we can end this video on a positive note. Now. The printer itself, when I was unboxing it, is packed really well, but it did lack a paper instruction manual. And I think that for novices or people that are just getting into 3D printing, that's going to be a bit confusing. They're not going to know exactly what they're getting themselves into. Assembling the machine was really simple. It was a matter of just a few bolts uh, to get that gantry upright. It was connecting a few cables for the motors and the interface. Um, but other than that, it was it was it was pretty straightforward if you've assembled lots of 3D printers before. But I think for a novice, that's going to be a little bit tough. So I would really recommend that uh, before this Kickstarter ends up shipping, and I think it's supposed to ship somewhere around like March of 2024, I think that a paper manual is something that you just have to have uh, in the box with the machine. There is no auto bed leveling on this machine, and there is no auto Z offset. So that means manual bed knobs on the underside of that build plate, and that means going into the interface and adjusting that Z offset manually to get it just right. It does come with some tools and some things like that, um, inside the printer to kind of help you with that, to get that gap correct for your Z offset. But I really think that that's a feature that we need to see, or those features are features that we need to see on all new machines. Um, I don't think it's a deal breaker, uh, especially for those of you who are experienced 3D printers, um, but uh, for novices, that's just gonna be at one more hurdle, one more stumbling block to get them using uh, this machine. The Another criticism here is the extruders are so incredibly difficult to load. Um, you have to cut that filament just at the perfect angle and you got to bend it just straight um, towards the back and down a little bit when you're feeding it in on each side or you will have one heck of a time getting that filament loaded. And again, I think that novices might be a bit frustrated with that and they some of them might not even be successful with that. So um, I don't really think there's anything that you can do about that. Just know that if you end up picking up that machine and you hear my voice right now, that uh, you can load it. Um, you're just going to have to reach in there and you're going to have to make sure you get that point cut nice and sharp on the end of that filament, feed it through the filament sensor, straighten it out a little bit towards the back and a little bit down, uh, pull that lever on that extruder on each side when you shove it through there and you'll get it. Now, it is PLA only. And some of the criticism that I've uh, gotten from people who were visiting our live Twitch stream when we were printing with it did say that they kind of wish that it could print PETGs or other filaments. Now, I don't have any technical reason that it wouldn't be able to print PETG. I've just not had time to do it. I want to jump into their Ren Color Slicer, create some PTG profiles and feed some PTG in and just see what happens. I think the PTG has a lot of really fun colors, like right? so there's lots of translucents that I think would be really cool uh, to mix with, but um, I just don't know if it's technically possible, but I'm gonna try it. So maybe look for that in some future content. The default prints that come on the printer, on the SD card, they didn't have proper start G code to do prime lines and then jump out, do the print. So basically they would extrude off the end of the build plate and then the print head would move out to the middle of the build plate and start its print, but it would just drag that blob of filament out. So I would have to just reach over there and grab it and pull it off the nozzle as it moved. Now, slicing inside the Ren Color Slicer, the start G code was correct. So anything that you slice yourself would have the proper uh, prime line and print just fine. The printer is moderately loud. I don't, I don't think it's screaming loud, 
but it's going to play all of your favorite robot sounds while you're printing, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Lastly, the slicer defaults to 30C on the build plate. That's a little low. Now, I was trying to give the printer the benefit of the doubt. I was saying, well, you know, this is the temperature that they chose in the slicer for the printer. The default prints that were on the SD card, they were also at 30C. Um, so I tried to let it do it at 30C, but ultimately I had a couple of failures where things just came off the build plate, even if I squished it down really, really, really tight. So ultimately what I did is I just bumped the temperature up to 60C and I mean, everything held fantastic. Matter of fact, it held in one instance a little bit too fantastic and uh, I've kind of got some of the PLA kind of permanently embedded in that build plate, but it, it worked out really well. Okay, now let's get to the positives because this thing is freaking blowing my mind. I can't decide what to print and what to print with. The thought of having a machine that can mix PLAs, any combination of PLAs, right? So we have silks, uh, we have mats, we have PLAs, we have PLA pros, we have glow in the darks, we have glitters, we have sparkles. Think about that for a moment. You can make any filament glow in the dark. There's glow in the dark, right? Reds, oranges, blues, greens. You can take those and mix those at whatever percentage you want into whatever you're printing. And I'm going to have B-roll here in a moment of a glow-in-the-dark orange. So I took silk orange from Polymaker and took their uh, luminous orange and I did a gradient. So from solid silk orange all the way up into 100% glow orange. And that'll be done here shortly and I'll be able to bring it in the studio and show it to you. And hopefully you're seeing B-roll of it but I am super excited about things like that. I've got this one right here, which is a silk purple to a silk yellow. That This pineapple, which I thought would be kind of fun, and that's from a silk yellow uh, to a peridot green. I'm so excited about the potential, right? The opportunity that we have as makers to have a specialized tool to create things that nobody else can create. Now, color mixing hot ends, they've been around for a really long time and they're not going to be a machine that takes over the industry. They're not going to be a machine, or this machine is not gonna be a machine that's for novices. This machine is a very specialized tool. It's not replacing all of the filament that's above my head here. This is simply going to be a tool that is in someone's arsenal as a maker and a crafter to build the things that no one else can make. This is something that is really going to take a lot of thought um, and, and a lot of practice, I think, to find the colors that you're really looking for and the mixtures of filaments that you can take matte filaments or regular PLAs and you can add just the right percentage of silk to them to get the shine that you want. That's what I'm trying to explain. I think this is a great specialized tool and I think at $369, which is what it goes for on Kickstarter right now, I think that that's a great price for it. Anything over that, I think that you start to get outside of uh, a cost-effective solution and you start to get into machines that have just a lot more features and a lot more functionality. But I think for a specialized tool at $369, um, I think it's fun. And uh, like I said, if it's something you're interested in, go down to the description, uh, click that Kickstarter link, go over there. But of course, again, uh, read through all the Kickstarter information so you're fully informed uh, before you make that decision. I would love for you to go down to the comments and tell me what you think you would do with a specialized tool like this. What filaments would you like to mix together? What colors would you like to see? And what, what it is that you would like to print? I tried to find the lettuce model that they were printing on the Kickstarter page. I thought that would actually be kind of fun. I wanted to kind of experiment with that. I searched the internet high and low looking for a lettuce model to do that with and I couldn't find it. But if you find it, tell me. Put it in the comments below because I'd like to print it. I told you that we were going to give this machine away and that's what we're going to do. I'm going to print some fun things with it and then I'm going to give it away because wow. I think that I just don't have the time to experiment with a tool like this to really use it in its full capacity. So I would like to give it to one of you. And I think I'll include about a dozen spools of Polymaker filament to go along with that. Yay! Some fun colors and types of filament really to let someone experiment and play with. Now, if that's something you're interested in, you're going to want to jump over to our Twitch show, which is twitch.tv slash loyalmoses where we are live Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 5 p.m. Pacific. And that's likely where we're going to do that giveaway. So make sure you're over on Twitch and make sure you uh, give us a uh, follow over there. And a very special thank you to Polymaker for sponsoring today's content and all the filament that we used in this printer. And I'll have their link on the screen and in the description below. Go check them out. Thank you. Now let's talk about print quality. I mean, ultimately, it's a 3D printer and it has to print well. 
I think the print quality is good. I think that the slicer settings uh, in profiles for different filaments are very lacking. There was only one or two defaults in there, and uh, they're just not going to be correct for the wide uh, array of filaments that we have uh, at our fingertips. So I think before this thing ships, Red and Color really needs to get some profiles out there. Um, I would hit some very common filaments. I would hit uh, Polymakers, Polylite, PLA. I'd hit their Polylite PLA Pro. I would likely hit some bamboo filament. Um, that's what I would do. I would get those common popular filaments out there, maybe some eSun or some Sunlu, and I would get those profiles built into that red and color slicer so that people can just have a better, uh, better experience in higher quality prints right out of the box. Well, if you made it this far, thank you very much. I'd love to have your like and I'd love to have your subscribe. It means a lot. We're a small channel. And if you are looking at this machine or you're not looking at this machine, if you like it, if you don't like it, leave a comment below and tell me what you think. I'd love to read it. Also, a huge shout out to our YouTube and our Patreon members. You are what make this content possible. And we are so, so thankful for your support. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one.